Welcome to Electron Online, and in this example, we're going to talk about the relationship between Gauss's law and capacitors with dielectric. So here we have a capacitor, and for the sake of showing you this example, I've made the conductor plates on the capacitor very wide, and then here's the dielectric in between, and we can imagine that with a capacitor like that, all of the charge in the capacitor, excess charge, will reside on the right side of the plate, and then you can see that there'll be an induced charge on the left side of the dielectric negating some of the charges on the plate so that the electric field through the dielectric is weaker than it would be if the, electric, if the dielectric wasn't there then the electric field would then solely be, be a, a source of these charges right there but you can see with a dielectric the strength of the electric field is diminished by the, um, the induced charges on the dielectric we already saw in previous videos that the electric field next to a capacitor plate like that can be calculated by taking the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught if there's no dielectric, which is the charge per unit area, times 1 over epsilon sub naught. With a dielectric, we knew that the electric field strength would be diminished by 1 over k, k of course being the dielectric constant of the dielectric, and that would be the electric field in there. So let's see if with Gauss's law we can come to the same conclusion. Well, remember what Gauss's law uh, said, that the surface integral of E dot dA is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon sub naught. So, let's use that same principle here. Here we have a Gaussian surface, and imagine the Gaussian surface is a slab, where the left side of the slab is somewhere in the middle of the conductor on the left side, and the right side of the slab is some distance into the dielectric. Now, will there be any electric field emanating from the left side of the slab? And the answer is no. <clears throat> the electric field will go from this charge to the negative charge on the other side of the, um, of the capacitor plates. So there will be no electric field in this direction, so no uh, what we call electric flux crossing the Gaussian surface on the left side. We also realize that there will be no electric field emanating directly up, directly down, out, or in the back direction. The only electric field that we see is through the right side of the slab. And so we can then say that the strength of the electric field on the right side of the slab, which is equal to the strength of the electric field inside the dielectric, can then be found using this equation, because then we can say that the electric field strength times the area of the right side of the slab, which is A, is equal to the Q enclosed divided by epsilon sub naught. Now the question is, what is the charge enclosed? Well, we have to add up the charge on the plate and we have to add up the charge on the dielectric. That would be the induced charge. And since they're opposite in sign, we have to subtract the induced charge from the charge on the plate. So this would be equal to Q on the plate minus Q uh, induced. Okay, now let me put a line in between there so we don't get that confused like that. Okay, now, how do we find Q on the plate, the charge of the plate, and Q induced? Well, let's go back to this equation right here. We can see here that the charge is basically equal to the charge density times the area. So which means that E times the area is equal to the charge density on the plate times the area of the plate minus the charge density of the induced charges times the area of the plate, all divided by epsilon sub naught. So now what we can see is, okay, so we have an A on the left side, we have an A on the right side, so we can say that E times A is equal to A times sigma minus sigma induced. Now remember, this is the charge density on the capacitor plate, and this is the charge density of the induced charges divided by epsilon sub naught. Now how do these relate to each other? Well, we know that the charge density of the induced charges is equal to 1 minus 1 over k times the charge density of the charges on the capacitor plate. Alright, so that means that this cannot be written as the charge induced is equal to, putting over a common denominator, would be k minus 1 over k times the charge density on the capacitor plate and we can then replace this by this quantity right here. Now to give you a little feel for it, notice that if three, if k is of course three, then three minus one is two, it would be two thirds of that. So if k is three, the charge density of the induced charges would be two thirds. If let's say k is five, 
then 5 minus 1 would be 4 divided by 5 would be 4 fifths and so forth. If k was 2, it would be 2 minus 1 over 2 or 1 half. So the amount of the induced charges would of course depend on the dielectric and the stronger the dielectric, that means the more charge induced or the more charges would be induced on this side and the weaker the electric field will become inside the dielectric. And that's what we find when we use Gauss's law, we can see that. So now we're going to replace that in there and we see that E times A is equal to A times the charge density on the plates minus, of course we have to go like this, that would be K minus 1 over K times the charge density on the plates divided by epsilon sub naught. Now you can see that we can subtract out the charge density on the plates so this cannot be written as A times, <coughs> excuse me, the charge density times, and now we're left with 1 minus K minus 1 over K, like that, divided by epsilon sub naught. If we now simplify this, what do we get? So this is equal to A times this times, it would be K minus K minus 1 over k divided by epsilon sub naught. All right, now you can see that the numerator, k minus k, that's 0. And, ooh, we have a minus times a minus, that makes this a plus. Don't want to make that mistake. All right, so now we have e times a is equal to a times the charge density on the plates divided by epsilon sub naught. And what does this simplify to? This simplifies to k minus k, which is 0, simply 1 over k. So times 1 over k, which is equal to, and of course when the areas cancel out, we'll do that in a moment. So we have a sigma divided by epsilon sub naught times k. And finally, of course, we have the electric field times the area equals the area times the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught times k. So if we want to make that in a simple equation, divide both sides by a. And so what we get then is that the electric field in the dielectric is going to be therefore be equal to the charge density on the plates divided by k times epsilon sub naught. And we find that using Gauss's law, we come up with the very same equation right here. Now, of course, sigma here could be written as charge divided by unit area, and then we get the same equation. But in whatever form we want to put it in, Notice that the Gauss's law works really fine with dielectrics and again shows us that the electric field can be found using Gauss's law as we can find in any other method like that. So here's an interesting relationship that with dielectrics and Gauss's law we can also find the electric field strength inside the dielectric between two capacitor plates. And that's how we do that.